Hi, I'm Frank Davis, president of OptaVita Health. I'm here in my office at OptaVita Health headquarters. And I want to take a minute just to uh, do a preface to the seminar that you're going to watch. This seminar was presented to my employees, but I've done it also to other groups. And the main purpose is it's to uh, explain in a little more detail uh, about our flagship product that you could not in any way, shape, or form put it on a shelf and have people understand why it is so good, why it is so critical uh, for them in terms of maintaining or achieving optimal health. And after the, you watch the seminar uh, after this, I'm going to wrap up uh, a little summary in terms of trying to bring it into a little more concise understanding of, of the why and what relative to nutrition and the solution. Uh, and hopefully it will be a meaningful experience to you and help you understand clearly why this is such a revolutionary product. And this is the new improved version of our Complete Essentials. What I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do to start with is give you a little bit of just a, a little bit of background as to why maybe I feel qualified to actually address some of these subjects. <clears throat> and it, it was an evolution for me. But I, as, as a child, I started off my life with every childhood disease known to man. I had mumps, measles, chicken pox, you name it. Looking back, basically, I was raised on antibiotics. And I'm convinced now that it significantly impacted my immune system so that because and instead of enabling my body to deal with it, and you're artificially attacking all this stuff with these medications, and uh, it does impact how your body then is able to respond to it in the future. So... <clears throat> Anyway, that being said, uh, throughout my childhood growing up, I just had a very compromised immune system. I joke that if somebody drove by, they had to window down, they had a cold, I ended up catching the cold. I was very susceptible to anything that happened. Um, and <clears throat> being a what I call a wannabe athlete, it was a very challenging because every time I would get into, whether it be basketball, football, or all the things growing up in the high school, etc., I was always proverbially catching some kind of a, a cold, a flu, uh, a whatever, and I, uh, uh, it was always the recouping problem. So, <clears throat> uh, anyway, in my, uh, I ended up throughout my growing up and into my uh, adulthood, I ended up with chronic fatigue syndrome after having mononucleosis twice, hepatitis twice, and pneumonia twice. And so when I ended up with this chronic fatigue syndrome in my early 40s, it was, it was to me a sentence worse than death because I literally could not even go on a walk with my wife in the evening. I would just, and this went on when we went down, and I, maybe she could remember this, when we uh, went to our condo in St. George, I had to put a bed in the back of a Suburban. My wife drove, she never drives, and I had to lay. Now, that was what I was dealing with. And it was the catalyst to propel me and said, I've got to find a solution. I can't deal with life like this. So <clears throat> I became immersed into trying to find a solution for my health issues. Um, in this valley, everybody has an, an has an answer. We live in the network marketing capital world. Every and I was willing to try it all, and I tried everything. I mean, I would take whatever, and I'd go to the doctors, and they would say, "Well, they would prescribe some kind of antidepressant." And I say, "Listen, I'm I'm discouraged. I'm not depressed." and I didn't take the medications. So literally about 20 years ago, approximately, I ended up going to a symposium in Park City. It was entitled uh, Foods as a Medicine, and it was put on by 
uh, a number of universities around the country, uh, uh, and they had uh, quite a uh, collection of these PhDs doing the presentation. And it was probably the most impactful thing that I had ever experienced because basically they, their presentation were saying, and this is, again, 20 years ago, said there has been more research in the last, two, in the last five years than the prior 200 years linking every known illness, every known disease to some form of dietary deficiencies. And really that was kind of the aha moment to me and said, you know, that has got to be my answer. And, and it kind of uh, obviously is validated by what Linus Pauling said. You know, he said it every vitamins and mineral deficiencies, but he's basically saying phytonutrients. It's basically what you're taking in your body is creating a defi you're either deficient and that's creating the susceptibility of diseases. The statement then by the American Heart Association replicates that. Basically, suboptimal diet is the cause of all leading death-related diseases, vascular disease, etc. I'm sure you've all heard this before, and that was really what I became away from this whole experience of saying, let food be your medicine, let medicine be your food. Um, and what I'm going to uh, attempt to show today is um, the problem with our food system, what we do about it, and then what the solution is. Unfortunately, what we're going to find in our country today, and it's, it's a worldwide problem, but more so in the United States, is that our Farming techniques, the traditional, I grew up on a farm, we used traditional uh, sustainable methods of mulching, rotating crops, all these type of things. Those things are done away with for all intents and purposes in these massive farms. Uh, they, they do not use sustainable methods. You're, they're using extensive use of herbicides, pesticides, fungicides. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means the, one of the most common used herbicide is Roundup. The ingredient in Roundup is called glyphosate. Here shows that it depletes, it, it depletes the, uh, it, in, it inhibits the uptake of the minerals from the soil. So this was just, <laughs> just the other day. Uh, Monsanto, who produces Roundup, was sued and had to pay $281 million because they have traced the cancer that this individual, and, and it's, gonna, it's going to blow up even more. But this, this is just a, a list of, of some of the common foods that we're eating today that they have tested for the presence of glyphosate. You recognize any of those? Do you eat any of those? Cheerios. Everybody's yeah. eating Cheerios. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, well, anything look, that's got oats in it. I mean, look at all. Yeah. Anything that has any kind of oats in it. But even these natural. Whole oats. Yeah. It doesn't even matter if it says organic. It tri it switch it uh, kind of bleeds over. <laughs> so. So what? So you understand what what it, what they do is uh, they have created genetically modified seeds. So if it is soybeans, if it's corn or whatever, what the what uh, the intent was is that seed is resistant to Roundup, and so what it what they take a license to say now we can spray this crops with this roundup and it'll kill everything but the plant but the corn and so it kills the weeds so they don't have to to do anything um, bugs won't eat it uh, you gotta wonder if the bugs won't eat it you gotta wonder anyway uh, I will, I'm going to move past, but it, it basically is talking about what the state of our farming is today in the food supply system. It's deficient in the minerals because of the abusive use uh, of that. And then 
this is just showing the USDA is a chart, and this is only to 2005, showing because of those lack of sustainable farming techniques, the over farm soils, the, that most of the nutrient values are significantly down. Uh, you would have to eat literally eight oranges to today to equate to one back 50 years ago. Same thing with spinach. 50 years ago, you'd have to eat 10 servings of spinach to equate because of the nutrient deficiencies in the soils alone. This was done in uh, Canada showing the, the nutrient loss over the past 50 years. So the beauty about this, it's the government of Canada and it's our own USDA that are coming out with these statistics showing how bad our food supply system is and how deficient it is based on our farming techniques today. So then the second thing is we're now creating a hybrid or the genetically modified stuff that are designed to be shelf stable um, and they are produced for their weight, their, their stability, their color, not for nutrient, nutrition. In this Food Inc., you know, he basically makes this statement, which is so true. It's not just the corn and, I mean, the, uh, the chicken and the cow. If you ever, I would highly recommend you get a hold of this, this video, Food Inc. It's on Netflix. It's, yeah, it is, it's very revealing of what's gone in, in our system. But it basically says the food we're eating today is, is not only nutrient deficient, it's not healthy. So then what happens, uh, well, I'll, I'll go back. Uh, this is basically saying what's going on. When we harvest most of our crops today, fruits and vegetables, they are harvested prematurely. They're artificially ripened. They, the average fruit and vegetable in the United States is shipped 1,600 miles before it hits our, our yeah. table. And, but uh, using the example of spinach, if you harvest spinach, and even if you put it in cold storage, within five days, eight days actually, within eight days you've lost over 50% of the uh, folate and, and most a similar amount of their water soluble vitamins and the nutrients in that product. So if it's already grown in nutrient deficient soils, then it's shipped for 1600 miles and put in cold storage, you can imagine how much nutrition is left. One of the, what I use is a, a case study and you can Google this, it's called birthday apples. Birthday apples just as an indicative of what we do in this country. They harvest apples at the time of harvest. They treat them with a, a chemical called methylcyclopropene. They wax them, they put them in cold storage, and they bring them out a year later. That's why they called birthday apples. The only nutrient value left in that apple is fiber. Sugar is also in there, but they, you know, that is, in, that is just what we do in this country today. Then, once we get it, you know, how much food of the fruits and vegetables and things that we get are processed. When they process them, they literally, you know, this is, this is what happens in this country. Some way, shape, or form, it's either cooked, it's either irradiated, they go through some process they call a kill step to get rid of all of the micros in there. Now, if you go to the garden and you pick out something and you just wash it, it does, have, it does have microorganisms on it, but it also has inherent in there the probiotics and the other things that are, are going to enable us to eat it and fight off all the stuff. So when you're now eating foods that have been sterilized, your body has no, we're not using or not getting what nature created or God created for us to be able to deal with some of the microorganisms on the food. That's why you're seeing the incidence rise of all these, you know, E. coli and the other thing. They're always been on there. It's just we can't deal with them anymore. And then anytime you heat any food up, 
to over 118 degrees, it will kill the enzymes. Enzymes in a food are what breaks that food down so your body can utilize it and absorb it. So bottom line is when you cook this stuff, you kill the enzymes, uh, you change a lot the molecular structure, and half the nutrients, the water-soluble vitamins, etc., just go down the drain. So I'm going to give you just an idea of what happens when you're eating your food here, so to make you feel warm and fuzzy. <clears throat> Something that we started uh, years ago is, is processing flour, white flour. When you mill it, and they take away the bran and the germ, you take away 98% of the nutrient value of that product. When they get down there, you know, there's no vitamins, no minerals, anything left. So what happens is you end up, they basically said, the government actually said, hey, we have to put it back in. So what they do, they put it back in, by law, in a synthetic form, which I will talk about later. So when you look... Fortified, enriched, yeah, and it's in everything. It's in your crackers. It's in you know. It's in your breads. It's in your cereals. You name it. It's in there. Uh, but the problem is, they have found by eating white flour, it leads to deficiencies in in some of these minerals. It's linked to synthesis of tumor cells because of some of these things. Linked to higher blood cholesterol and. Um, gallstone, bladder, etc. That's just, you know, rice is another one. You eat white rice. Uh, I use in some of our nutritional products a, a rice bran. A rice, when you take the bran off and you take the, uh, the germ, I could take this, uh, and the reason they do it is because uh, it, it makes it shelf stable. White rice will last forever. With the bran and the germ, it has, uh, it has the oils in it. It has the nutrients in it. And they take the nutrients out, then it's just nothing there. You get as much nutrition eating, running down the street with your mouth open as eating white rice. Uh, well, depending on what time of day it is, you probably get more <laughs> nutrition. In the right evening. In, yeah, in the yeah. evening, right, when the bugs are happening. So, so bottom line is... Uh, with our modern farming techniques, the, uh, the deficiencies in the soils, uh, the premature harvesting, the treating of it, the long distance travel, uh, and, the, and the time delays, and you add to that the, the cooking and the treating of the product, we virtually are getting almost no nutrition out of your, even when you think of fresh fruits and vegetables, they are not fresh. I was in New York and I did a little filming with Montel Williams and we went to Whole Foods Market and we bought some spinach. And it was five degrees below zero and the first part of February. And so the question was, here is fresh spinach. Well, how fresh is fresh? Where was it grown? Where did it come from? We're in New York City in the middle of the winter. Well, we knew where it came from because it was written on the, the package. It came from Mexico. And most of the, and the other fruits came from Chile. And so that's where this long-term shipping and storage, everything comes in. So this is basically statistic what's going on. The consumption of nutrient dense fruits has plummeted where the rise of processed food, everything you eat in a package that has gone through some type of a can, any type of processing has escalated almost a thousand percent. And the result is, is primarily, and I took a slide out of here. I had some pictures of some very obese people. And, and the problem, and I was using the explanation, when you use, you're eating all of this highly processed food that for all intents and purposes are nutrition devoid, your body is saying, I got nothing out of it, keep it coming. There's no satiety, uh, you're not nourishing your body on a cellular level, and so... You just keep eating to try because you're, you're continually hungry to try and fill a void that your body's asking for, and it's not doing it. So I love this quote by Mark Hyman. It only has uh, 
missing one element. It just says if people eat wild, fresh, organic, locally, genetically, non-genetically mined food, grown in virgin mineral rich soils that has not been tried across vast distances, stored for months before eating, work, live outside, breathe only fresh, unpolluted air, drink only pure water, clean water, sleep nine hours, move their bodies once a day, and are free from chronic stressors exposure, then they wouldn't need supplementation. Well, what I'm going to talk about is if it had been able to say they would need, they wouldn't need whole food supplementation. Because if you think we have problems with our food supply system, everybody in the United States, I say everybody, 90, it's more than 70% of adults take some form of supplementation to fill the void because they're not getting it out of their, fo their foods. The problem with, with supplementation is we're dealing with <coughs> chemical isolates. So if you look at this Wall Street Journal, case against vitamins, recent studies show that many vitamins not only don't help, they actually cause harm. Why? Because they are made out of coal tar. They're processed with you know, petroleum esters. They're processed with chemicals such as cyanide, acetone, formaldehyde. Okay? So I'm going to walk through some comparable. You were talking about some fortified, enriched. Here's the enriched. Ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Pyridoxine hydrochloride, B6. Vitamin B12 should put in parentheses there cyanocobalamin. That's what it is. So we say, what is that? Ascorbic acid, in nature, all vitamins are a complex. They're a compound. Ascorbic acid is part of that compound in nature, but it is only a fraction of it. It's the outer protective shell of the compound vitamin C, which comprises of routine, bioflavonoids, J factor, K factor, vitamin P, and ascorbic acid to, to protect it. Okay? Pyridoxine hydrochloride. Well, B6, you know, pyridine, pyridoxine hydrochloride is, as mentioned before, a petroleum ester. It is processed, it is blended with hydrochloric acid and processed with formaldehyde. So my position is, as reasonable, rational thinking people would say, how does a dead, toxic, carcinogenic chemical benefit a live organism like the body? It's impossible. And what I'm going to show you on these, not only do, are they not beneficial, every one of them does damage. Uh, so here's what I was going to, they took this off the market, but this was the same thing. B6, cyanocobalamin. And you can look at anything you've got. You know, you got a cold cereal for $3. You have this at $120. They have the same thing in them. These are made in the same factories. And one's sprayed on it. One's put in a capsule form. Uh, and the way they differentiate them a lot of times is how many milligrams are in there. And it's like, okay, you can have, you know, one teaspoon of poison or you could have five teaspoons of poison. And they're trying to say the five is better for you. This is the same thing. What the vitamin C will be some form of ascorbic acid or an ascorbate. It is basically 99.9% .9 of all, quote, vitamin C and ascorbic is made in China. Most of it is, a healthy percent of it is made in non-regulated laboratories using municipal water with known contaminants. But that aside, it's made out of corn syrup blended with hydrochloric acid. That's how they make the synthetic vitamin C. Okay, now... Anybody have an idea what this is? The cyano, part of the cyanocobalamin? Cyanide. Now, does that... Is, Same cyano, which is cyanoacrylate. Yeah. Which is 
So, and now, here's the number one selling, apparently, prenatal vitamin. What I love about this says guaranteed 100% natural. The exceptional purity. Nothing natural about that. Nothing natural about that. Nothing natural about that. Nothing natural about this. Here's vitamin E, D-alpha tocopherol succinate. Vitamin E in nature comprises of four tocopherols and four tocopherols. All right? So there's eight of them. They take one-eighth of it and synthetically produce it and say it's the same thing. It's impossible. It's like we're in the football season. It's like taking the quarterback and saying, I only need him. I don't need the rest uh, of the team. So uh, what I'm going to show you is the end result. My, so my whole question was, you've got number one selling, number one selling, you know, any, any cheap cereal, number one selling. Are these the same or are they different? The, all of those vitamins are the same, made in the same lab laboratories. As I said, some sprayed on, some put in powder form. So, so the problem is, now, these are university studies or other studies showing not only is there a difference in absorption, this was almost four times better absorption by the body uh, of, of your B3, but uh, the difference is they had to stop a study on women using vitamin A in a synthetic form because it created premature births of their children and some other issues with that. Uh, on the vitamin B12 as well as B6, they found that in a synthetic form, it, it actually inhibits the action of your natural B12s or B6. In vitamin C, it creates genotoxins that mutate the DNA um, in the form of ascorbic acid. B6, same thing. Not only did this increase the, the risk of atherosclerosis, it also, uh, in the form of a D-alpha tocopherol, blocked the, re, the free scat, because you've heard of vitamin E as a, a antioxidant. Well, the antioxidant, what antioxidant is, it, it is a, a scavenger of free radicals. But they found that the taking vitamin E in the form of D-alpha or D-L-alpha tocopherol actually blocks the free scavenging ability of the gamma tocopherol, which is the workhorse. It's kind of like we're talking about, you know, THC versus CBD. The workhorse over here is the CBD in, in hemp extract. The other one is vitamin D. We're finding that vitamin D today is, is probably what used to be the vitamin C of years past. It is really linked to almost every condition you can think of from bone health to actually obesity to heart health, everything. The problem is in the US, the 35th parallel, basically in Atlanta to Los Angeles, from the months of November through March, your body does not synthesize sunlight into vitamin D. So they're equating that a lot to the cold and flu season. You need vitamin D. The problem is most vitamin D, again, is uh, D3, and it is synthesized from lamb's wool. Uh, whereas, you know, what we have in our product, what we've ever used in the D3 that I, I started with, with Active, was from an organic mushroom. Mushrooms do synthesize sunlight just like the human body does and converts it into a vitamin D. And we would consume that, that and, and you're getting it in a whole food form. And there's all sorts of other benefits to the mushroom on top of that. So the bottom line is, you know, what we've been talking about in the U.S. in terms of our food supply system and the lack of nutrition, what we attempt to do for it with our, our synthetic vitamins, if they were working, we would not be at the very bottom 
of industrialized nation in terms of life expectancy and still the number one in terms of health care expenses. Uh, so a couple of little uh, twists on here. I mean, it literally shows our lifestyle, the type of stuff we're eating, and why we are, you know, down at the bottom in terms of our life expectancy and how much we're spending on our health care costs. In our country, what happens is it's all, all you got to do is trace where the money is because uh, the pharmaceutical companies have a big hold on what goes on in this country and you can't patent foods. Foods are where the answers are. And so they will find some way to synthesize it or create some type of, uh, it's, it's what's going on, and I'll explain this a little bit, in our hemp industry. The pharmaceutical industry has jumped in and they have created a, a isolate. And it now has passed legislation and it can be used for um, seizures. And so they're fighting, but what we have, and I'll explain as we get into it, we have what's called a full spectrum, meaning that it's not a chemical isolate, it is a full spectrum. And what we're going to find is that in any product, in any fruit, in any vegetable, what the, what the chemical industry does, they will find in that, like tomato, lycopene they have identified as uh, something that helps men with prostate cancer. That it's really a, a potent antioxidant. Uh, and so what they'll do is try to take that tomato and isolate that, that lycopene. Then they find out that it doesn't work or it works very poorly. But they don't understand that, that they have no clue in that tomato what are all the cofactors that make that work. Everything works synergistically together. They can't work as a, a lone quarterback without any blocking or anything else. And that's the approach of the chemical industry. And of course, it's all about the money. Uh, just, just a few examples. Lipitor, 4,000% markup. Claritin, 30,000% markup. Zoloft, 11, 12,000% markup. Xanax, almost 600,000% markup. So those are the problems that we're dealing with. It's just about the money. And it's a fight for the American public to try and get help because you're fighting against the giants. Uh, so the answers are what? You know, obviously, if you can do it, fresh fruits and, and vegetables, if you can grow them in your own garden, once you harvest a fruit within uh, six hours, it starts to oxidize. So over a period of time, you are losing every day a certain percentage of the nutrient value, the phytonutrients, the antioxidants, the cancer-fighting compounds, etc. One of the things that we're going to talk about a little bit more is where is it grown? And how is it, if it is processed, how is it processed? Uh, the traceability of something is key in terms of assuring yourself that you're getting the nutrient value that you anticipate. Of course, exercise is a given. You know, as, as Mark Hyman said, Dr. Hyman, you know, move your body daily in terms of getting, you know, uh, the necessary exercise. So, Bottom line is, as I went through, that it's not about the density of the nutrients. Raw foods are good, calories are important, but to get the nutrition, what I'm showing, and it's based on what we're dealing with today, you have to get it in whole food concentrate. That is really what drove me through this whole process to say, I have no clue when I'm buying foods, even organic produce, where it came from, how long it's been in transport, how much... You know, if it's a carrot, how much vitamin A am I getting out of it, you know, without testing it? So I opted to go into uh, saying the only way 
for me to know what I'm getting. I'm going to get that in a whole food concentrate. And I uh, basically a, a concentrate is saying we can take a whole food, reduce it down to either an extract or a powder. We can then test it as to its nutritional integrity. And now I know what I'm getting. Because of all of this, we ended up developing the 400. This is our latest version, but the whole, the complete uh, essentials was developed with myself and uh, this Michelle Baccarella, who is a registered dietitian, master's degree in clinical nutrition. It, it basically said, we went out and said, you know, not only can you not get it in your diet if you're, no matter how hard you're trying because of what we're dealing with in our food supply system. But not all ingredients are created equal. And so that traceability, that transparency, we said, okay, we're going to create a product that the reason we call it complete, it was designed to provide the body everything it needs in a whole food for immune system, for all of your bodily functions, uh, everything the body, you still need calories, you still need fats, you still need protein uh, and carbohydrates, but from a nutritional supply, this has all the vitamins extracted from fruits and vegetables, um, all the minerals from a whole food form. It has all these antioxidants from fruits and vegetables, uh, and uh, it has 15 uh, strains of probiotics. Each probiotic has its function in the body. Gut health is critical. That's where most of your diseases begin if you don't have good gut health. And most people are deficient. You know, when you're taking an antibiotic for whatever reason, uh, it's kind of like chemotherapy. It goes in, it kills everything in sight, you know. Um, and uh, so it basically depletes, you know, gut flora is critical for your health. But if you're, yeah, if you're taking, if you're taking some antibiotic, it goes in and, and, and just basically depletes it. So we have 15 strains of, of, of uh, probiotics here. And the probiotics, what they do, I mean, they help your digestive system. Uh, they help in so many different ways in, in terms of, uh, like everything. Minerals, so, uh, yeah, they're critical in terms of the, uh, the bioavailability of some of the foods that they help your body absorb and utilize. So I use the, I use the example here in the state of Utah. If you ever go to a, a camping site and you drive in, you know, and during a nice summer, day, or let's say it's, uh, you might relate to this, how many of those parking stalls are usually filled on a weekend or on a holiday? 100% of them. And so you just keep driving through. What probiotics do, they, they, they colonize in these cavities in your stomach. And so if you get a bad bacteria coming in your body, so to speak, and there's no place for it to park because it's taken up with good bacteria, it will end up passing through your system. And so it's so critical to keep your body basically filled with good bacteria. That's why this has it. You're taking 15,000 or 5,000, 5 billion, excuse me, CFU of bacteria a day to keep that good flora, that good bacteria in your, in your digestive tract. Okay. One of the things that we did, uh, and this, I'll just kind of end on this relative to our complete. It's not 100%, but one of the things I found was a technology that we could reduce any type of fruit, vegetable, to a powder with zero loss of any color, any flavor, or any nutrients. We would test it before, and we would test it afterwards. And uh, not only that, we had it sitting on a shelf at 10 years, ran a test after 10 years. Because it creates a flat, solid particulate, when it was not exposed to any moisture, 
after 10 years, it was still 100% intact. The bottom line on this is, you know, medicines, I'm, I'm basically, I'm an anti-drug fanatic. I haven't, for all intents and purposes, taken as much as an aspirin in 15 years. Uh, there is something nature created that is much better with no side effects. Well, hopefully you enjoyed watching this seminar and hopefully it was also meaningful to you and you were able to understand some of the challenges that we all have relative to maintaining or achieving good health. Let me just summarize again what I was trying to communicate in this seminar. First of all, all the reasons that we're dealing with such a high incidence of these what they call Western diseases, heart disease, cancers, diabetes, stroke, all the autoimmune diseases, things that were not prevalent back in the early 1900s. First of all, it's the change of diet. You know, we have moved from an agrarian society where we were literally uh, harvesting and eating virtually everything we uh, ate within hours and days, fresh, um, and uh, today uh, that scale is tipped 180 degrees. We're eating 90, 80 to 90 percent of the food we eat is processed. It's been cooked, pasteurized, um, radiated, uh, you name it. We have uh, anything to make it convenient, can it, box it, do whatever, and, and every step degradates the nutrient value of that product. So the significant change in our diet, the Western diet, has had a significant impact on our health. Combine that with the fact that the foods we are eating that are produced uh, are grown in nutrient deficient soils. Their, the industrial farming does not use sustainable farming methods that were uh, common um, 50, 100 years ago. That was mulching, rotating crops, keeping that, uh, the nutrients in the soil. The nutrients have been leached. They've been leached by the abusive use of pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, which actually inhibit the uptake of some of those nutrients into the plants. We're fighting a losing battle with the foods and a system that we have in place today. Then you take the foods we do produce, where are they produced? Well, uh, I happen to be in the middle of winter right now, it just past Christmas. Uh, where do I, I go buy fresh spinach, where was it grown? Well, I can tell you, you know, the stuff I got either came from Mexico or Chile. The average fruit and vegetable in the United States has traveled 1,600 miles. The, the, after you harvest that spinach, in this case, even if you put it in cold storage, the, the oxidation process begins within six hours. So uh, it's continuing to degradate. If within eight days you've lost 53% of the folate of that spinach, and an equivalent amount of water-soluble vitamins and other nutrients. So forget the fact that it was probably nutrient deficient in the first place because it was grown in nutrient deficient soils. Now you've lost an additional 50 plus percent of the nutrients. So this is what you're ending up with. Then add to that the processing. You know, uh, where we're taking these fruits and vegetables and to make it convenient and long storage, we're taking uh, the green beans in the case in the seminar and we're cooking it at high heats, processing it, putting it into cans, then it goes on your shelf, then when you cook it, you open it up, you put it in a pot, you heat it up again, you boil it, and then you pour all the excess water down the drain, which would probably is the balance of any nutrients left in that green bean and you end up eating fiber with no nutrient value whatsoever. And so, you know, you take all of those elements, change of diet, depletion of nutrients in the food because of the soil and because of the use of pesticides, herbicides, etc. 
the time to market, and then processing, you know, it's no wonder that we're dealing with the health issues that we are. There is a solution, and that is what I've been spending half my adult life researching. It became a focus of passion where we can get those uh, fruits and vegetables grown in nutrient-rich soils using sustainable methods, taking new technology and reducing that to a powder and testing it and knowing that 100% of those nutrients are intact and combining all that stuff together because we live in a convenient-based society where you can get all the nutrition from whole foods in a powdered form and know you're getting everything the body needs to support a healthy immune system to maintain and achieve optimal health. That's the message. I hope you take advantage of this product. You will notice a difference. It will change your health. I guarantee it. Thank you.